Hey class, welcome back to history. Glad to be jumping back into the American Revolution with you. Today we are covering chapter 10. So if you have not watched chapters 1 through 9, please go back and do those because this chapter 10 builds upon what we've already covered. Chapter 10 is titled A Tea Party in Boston. So before we jump into chapter 10, let's review what we learned in chapter 9. We learned about the Committee of Correspondence who was established or what it was established by Sam Adams. And he was one of the first people that wanted and knew for the colonies to survive and thrive, they needed to become independent, um, independent of the mother country or Britain. So um, we, know, we wanna note that the Boston Massacre was a big thing that played a big role in this wanting to become independent. Um, and the colonial America, Right, the colonies, the colonists enjoyed drinking tea. So this is what we're going to learn about. So they enjoyed drinking tea. And we've kind of talked about this in Johnny Tremaine, those that are, are on uh, track and on top of that. So we're going to read about a situation that made the colonists very angry during this chapter. Okay, and we're going to learn a little bit more about this tea party. So we're, there's this tension that's happening between the colonists and Great Britain. And they are being becoming distrustful, distrustful, or not very happy with this taxation without representation, the things that are happening with the British authority. So let's call attention to the big question. What were the events that led to the Boston Tea Party? Okay, so as we read, let's look for answers and events that led up to the Boston Tea Party. Let's start reading and follow along with me. Parliament makes another mistake. They just keep making mistakes one after another. Have you ever heard the expression, he was too clever for his own good? It means that sometimes a person thinks he has a smart solution to a problem. Instead, his solution makes things worse. Few sayings better describe what the British government did next. Parliament had left the tax on tea just to show the colonists that it had the right to tax them. Meanwhile, the colonists had maintained the boycott on tea just to show Parliament that they didn't. Parliament decided its plan had not worked. British tea merchants had lost their colonial customers. The colonists were buying tea smuggled in by Dutch merchants. Smuggling means coming in underneath the law, under, underneath the radar, those things that aren't being taxed, aren't allowed, but are being brought in. As a result, the government hadn't collected more than a, pennies, a few pennies in taxes. So in 1773, Parliament came up with another plan. It passed the Tea Act. Parliament's new plan was clever but tricky. Parliament lowered the price of the tea itself, but it also kept the tax on the tea. When the new price of the tea was added to the tax, the total cost was less than what the colonists paid for tea from the Dutch. So let's pause really quick. We see this, this person drinking this colonist and the caption says tea was a popular drink in the colonies so Britain is realizing that they want to show that they still have the authority they know that tea is a very popular drink in the colonies and so they're saying hey we'll still continue this tax but let's lower the price of tea but keep the tax so if the colonists want to save money they would rather pay for the tea from us than Dutch because it's more expensive but they're still taxing the tea. So let's see what happens. Parliament thought the colonists would now buy British tea again. When they did, they would be paying the tea tax. Soon, 2,000 chests of tea were loaded up, uh, aboard British ships bound for the American colonies. Once there, the tea would be sold by certain colonial merchants. Unfortunately, Parliament was too clever for its own good. The Tea Act of 1773 showed how poorly Parliament understood the colonists. The colonists didn't care about the price of the tea. They cared about taxation without representation. They were not going to pay the tea tax no matter what British tea costs. Doesn't seem like it's working out. So news travels fast. As British tea ships headed for the colonies, Committees of correspondence went to work. Remember that network of group of people who would spread things about Parliament. 
The news spread through the colonies. The Sons of Liberty prevented the tea ships from being unloaded in several ports. In Philadelphia, for example, the Sons of Liberty sent a letter to the captain of a ship waiting in the harbor to unload its chests of tea. I wouldn't try to land that tea if I were you, said the letter. Your ship may just happen to be set on fire. The captain got the idea and decided not to dock. The colonists in the other colonial port cities responded the same way. Some captains had their ships wait in the harbor. Others turned their ships head around and headed home. That is not what happened in Boston. And this is what we've kind of read about in Johnny Tremaine. Time for tea. Early in December 1773, three tea ships entered Boston Harbor. Citizens gathered at a town meeting. They demanded that the governor of the colony order the ships to leave. The governor did not like Sam Adams or the Sons of Liberty. He refused. All right, so this looks like a picture of the tea party. No one was fooled by the customs worn, costumes worn by the colonists when they tossed the tea into the Boston Harbor. So that's a little glimpse of what's about to happen. Colonists took matter into their own hands. On the night of December 16th, 1773, a group of colonists dressed as Native Americans as a symbol of independence then they rowed out to the ships in the harbor. They boarded the ships and dumped every chest of tea into the water. Exactly 342 chests went into the harbor. All of this was done in a quiet, business-like way. When they were through, the Native Americans, right, it's in quotes because they weren't really Native Americans, swept the deck and put everything back in its proper place. This event became known as the Boston Tea Party. And we read... A, a more in depth, oops, sorry, more in depth happening, uh, more in depth uh, description of that in Johnny Tremaine. So if you're behind, definitely get caught up because it's pretty exciting. The intolerable, the intolerable acts. When Parliament and the King heard about the Boston Tea Party, they were outraged. Parliament passed laws to punish the people of Boston and the whole Massachusetts, Massachusetts colony. One law closed the port of Boston until the colonists paid for the wasted tea. For a city that depended on trading and fishing, this was a harsh punishment. Parliament hoped that Boston's merchants had fishermen and fishermen would turn in the guilty persons. Maybe they would even pay for the tea themselves. They didn't either. A second law took away most of the Massachusetts colony's self-government. The British also appointed an army general to be the governor of Massachusetts. The new governor came with thousands of British soldiers, soldiers the Quartering Act forced the colonists to house and feed, sorry, to house and feed the soldiers. We learned about quartering, meaning they, like I just said, they had to take in the British soldiers, um, you know, for like forcefully, like they didn't want to, but they had to, and they had to take care of them, give them bed and food. These laws became known as the Intolerable Acts because the colonists would not tolerate or accept them. Right, so intolerable means unbearable. So now they're making enemies. The British government failed to understand the effects of its actions. The new laws caused it to lose friends and make enemies. Even colonists who were loyal to Britain, who opposed the Sons of Liberty, who wanted to buy British tea and pay the tax felt the new laws were too harsh. So now their friends are becoming enemies. So let's look at this and read the caption. Tax collectors were unpopular. This tax collector had been painted with melted tar and covered with feathers. Oh my gosh, that would hurt. Looks like they even might even try to kind of hang them. Or maybe they're just trying to rope them up. Okay, once again, the committees of correspondence spread the news. The colonies decided to stand with the people of Boston to resist the intolerable acts. And to resist means to go against. They're revolting against the mother country. All right, so that's our chapter um, 10. For those, that, for those that want help, I'm going to go over the big question again and give some hints and points that you should be using and to help you answer the big question to get full credit. So the big question, what were the events that led to the Boston Tea Party? Okay, so some key points and hints. So Parliament passed the Tea Act of 1773, and what did that do to the tea? 
Remember, they did this because they wanted the tea to be com uh, competitive with the Dutch. So how did they, what did they do to the tea to make it competitive with the Dutch tea price? But the colonists were outraged by the tax. Remember, they didn't care about how much the tea cost. What did they care about? So when Britain sent ships of tea to the colonies, many ports refused to let the ships dock and unload. All right, and then what happened in 1773, which is known as the Boston Tea Party, okay? So those are some hints and points that you should you, uh, have in your answer to the big question. I will see you guys in chapter 11. See ya.